Welcome back to the Everdell practice round. And if you haven't seen the tutorial, I would recommend watching that video first. I'll go ahead and put a link right up here. And we'll go ahead and do a round of rabbits versus turtles. So rabbits will go first and let's go ahead and scan our hand and field so we can optimize what our best options are. Now we have a postal pigeon for two berries and it'll let us reveal two cards from the deck and play one that's worth up to three points for free. So that's pretty good. The next one is the fairgrounds, which lets us draw two cards. Yeah, I guess so, since we only have five cards, so that might be okay. The third one is the resin refinery, which lets us gain one resin, but it is a green production card, so it'll reactivate in the spring and autumn. That's pretty good. And then, of course, um, the last two is the courthouse and the judge, which we saw plenty of in the last video. But just a quick recap, the judge lets you replace a resource when you play a critter or construction, and the courthouse lets you gain a twig, resin, or pebble after you play a construction. Now let's move over to the Everdell tree and take a look at the special events and the requirements. I don't have any of these requirements yet, so I'll go ahead and skip those. But I do have a courthouse though, which will let me place up to two critters from my city under this event, and then I get three points per critter. So that's a lot, so I'll keep that in mind. And the fourth event has a bunch of crazy requirements, 10 cards, but it is worth a buttload of points, so good to know for now. Now under the Ever Tree, we have the basic events, which require three to four of their specific card types. For example, the Harvest Festival requires four of the green production cards. I only have two of the green production cards so far and two of the blue governance cards. So it's not enough to claim a basic event just yet. Now what about the meadow? Okay, we have a lot of green production cards for you to gain resources, a wife card that gives you points if you pair it with the husband card, and oh my god, what the flip is this? A legendary creator card already on the board. Now legendary cards only come with the collector's edition and there are a couple of key things you have to know. So one, if you have the card listed in the red banner, then you have to discard that card from your city and replace it with the legendary card. But that basically means you can play the legendary for free. You just can't play any more copies of the card listed in the red banner. Now the legendary card also counts as a cost for playing the card listed in the red banner if you play another critter or construction card. For example, here we have the McGregor's Market, which is a legendary construction, and it lists farm in the red banner, meaning if you have a farm in your city, it gets discarded, and the wife and husband cards that require farm can now use this McGregor's Market card as a cost. And the last two things for legendary cards is that they also give you an extra slot in your city. So if you look at that plus card icon above the title of the card, it means your new limit for city is 16 instead of 15. And lastly, you cannot discard any legendary cards from your city for any reason. Okay, now back to the rabbit's turn. Amelia Gustendu is a legendary that costs six berries, so the question is, is it worth it? Let's look at the effect, and it says, achieve an event even if you don't meet the listed requirements. Holy flip, that's crazy. Let's you get any event you want, and we have that bulky special event that we looked at from earlier, right? So cool, it's settled. I get the advantage of going first as the rabbit's turn, and I'm gonna go right away for the big one. But I need berries. So luckily, there's a forest card here that gives you three at once, so my first action will be to place a worker here, and gain three berries instantly. So we switch over to the turtle's turn, and to mimic the whole tortoise versus hare effect, turtles, tortoises like to take their time. So we see the legendary card that the rabbit's going for, but since player one is getting the advantage by going first, we'll go ahead and let them have it. But we'll focus on getting the storehouse instead, which will let you place a bunch of resources and it also regenerates during the green production seasons too. Now to do this, I need one twig, one resin, and one pebble. What I can do is put a worker on the basic action spot here in order to gain two twigs and a card to use for the haven later in order to gain all my other resources at once. And that's my turn. Now back to the rabbit's turn, I need three more berries so let's go ahead and place a worker at this other force location that lets me gain three berries instantly again, but now I lose more than half my hand and then my turn ends. Now as a turtle, I'll place a worker at the haven and discard four cards in order to gain one pebble and one resin so now I have everything I need in order to play the storehouse on my next turn. Now Rabbit's turn, I get to finally play the legendary Amila Gustendu card, which will be worth 5 points. The meadow gets replenished, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a card from the main deck, and oh, what's this? Another legendary card, and it's back to the turtle's turn. Okay, now as a turtle, I get to finally play the storehouse as my first card in the city, and now I can place two bears on here right away, and my turn ends. Now as a rabbit, unfortunately all my workers are now used up, I have no resources to play any other cards, and now I have to prepare for season by taking my two workers back but I get to gain one more worker from the ever tree, and unfortunately I don't have any green production cards, so that's that. Now as a turtle, cool, it's time for me to go for legendary, but I need five more berries, and it's not really possible to gain five at once, and I also ran out of workers too, and resources, so I'll go ahead and prepare for a season, grab all my workers, plus one, 
But unlike the rabbit, I can regenerate the green production card. So now I look at all the resources that I have on my storehouse card. And that was a sample round for Everdo. So you can see the pace picks up pretty fast once everyone gauges what's on the board. And now let's go ahead and move on over to solo rules. For solo gameplay, you're competing against an old rodent called Rugwort, who has a set of black rat meeples. You get five cards, Rugwort gets none. Same exact setup, but now you're gonna go ahead and place one of the rats on the top left forest card in order to block it, and a second rat on the three twig action space, also blocking that too. Now the game is played in the same exact way, except if you decide to play a card, then Rugwort gets to play a card. So if you play a card from the meadow, replenish it from the main deck, and then Rugwort uses this eight-sided die in order to see which card he plays. Now the top left of the meadow counts as number one, and the bottom right counts as number eight. So if Rugwort rolls and gets a three, then he gets to play a farm in his city. But for a Rugwort though, um, you have to stack the cards by type because the ability and the point value don't matter in this case. Now as the game goes on, you're going to have to eventually prepare for season. And then Rugwort will in turn prepare for season as well. So he has three steps to check. First, if he has enough of any card type in order to gain a basic event, then take that basic event and put it in his city. And step two, take a new worker and place it on the number one metal card. If it's summer, put another on number two. And then for autumn, put the remaining workers on three and four. You can't play these cards anymore, but Rugwort still can. And lastly, step three, going counterclockwise, move Rugwort's worker to the next forest card. You also have to move his worker from three twigs location to the two resin location for spring. For summer, move it to the one pebble. And then for autumn, move it down the line to the one berry and one card. Now also for autumn, you also have to take his worker from the third forest tile and move it to the three point journey phase. And that's it. In the end of all of this, in order to score all of Rugwort's points, he gets two points for every card, unless it's a purple prosperity card in which he'll gain three points for, three points for a special event that you didn't achieve, three points for his worker on a journey, and then any point tokens that you gave him. And those are all the solo rules. It's pretty intense, and what's really cool about this game is that once you beat this year one version of Rugwort, which is pretty much the easiest version, it gets more and more difficult, and the rulebook will provide you with two more uh, difficulty levels of the Rugwort solo play. Well, my final thoughts about this game, I think I'm gonna start out with my reviews, like how I would go about funding or buying a board game in the first place. The first thing that catches my eye is the artwork and the theme. I love like fantasy style games. Oh, by the way, I'm not being sponsored to say any of this if that's not obvious already with my 22 subscriber count. But um, anywho, the artwork, the theme, the components, all that dictates whether or not it will grab my attention, especially since there's a million games going on in Kickstarter and in retail and wherever. I love like this whole like classy, clean, well-designed kind of sturdiness um, of the board game. And the second thing that's most important for, for many people is gameplay, right? So how well are the mechanics integrated with the components? Are parts of it useless? Is it too easy um, to be fun or is it too complicated to even start learning? A game for me needs a good balance between the ease of play and the complexity. And the third thing that really hits home for me is player interaction. I love games that have confrontations or like have mad games with other people. So if a game lets you do that and sustain it, like you still have a chance of winning all the way to the end, then it's definitely a solid buy for me. So Everdell, does it look good? Well, if it hasn't been obviously, hell yeah, it looks good. It's, it's an easy win for me. Second, is it fun? Does it make sense? And does it actually use the parts well? Yes, yes, and most of the time. The only thing that annoys me a little bit about the Ever Tree is if you're shoveling the deck of cards and you smack the tree while there's a bunch of workers on it, a lot of them will end up falling, but that's not a big issue for me because one, how often are you shuffling the main deck? Rarely. And two, people take forever on their turn anyway, so it gives you something to do on your turn while you're waiting. So my opinion, Evertree, super well integrated in the game, looks amazing, serves many purposes, and it's also easier to look at the event cards since it's elevated, and it kind of even serves as a clock with the seasons up top. And lastly, the gameplay is really cool, it's relatively fast for a worker placement game. The theme makes it look deceptively simple, but worker placement games in general take a lot of thinking. It's nice that they layer simple things like basic events here, where if you have three points, you can get this card because a lot of other cards have more elaborate effects. So it's nice to have a combination of both easy and complicated effects because having that variation really keeps the game balanced and more interesting. So that's a sample round, solo rules, and my review and take on Everdell. Next up, I think I want to keep this pattern up of a tutorial and then a tech or unboxing. So I'm thinking of doing like a short film using the new Moment Lens combined with the iPhone XX Max followed by a tutorial on Rising Sun, so that should be fun.